today we're going to decoupage a tin can. This one had something like baked beans in it. Just be careful when you're um, cleaning and washing out the tin cans before you decide to use them. Some have got a really, really sharp edge here. This one did, but I've actually overlapped the paper onto the inside so that it softens the edge and it isn't sharp anymore. I've lined this one with paper as well. Just basically a piece of paper that I put into a spiral and put in and it expanded out to fit. So this is our tin can. We are going to cover it with music paper to set off with. Just squares that I've cut up ready. I've chosen music paper because it just gives a nice background. Now this is PVA and water which is mixed together. Two parts PVA, one part water until it's really sort of consistency of probably thick double cream before you've whipped it. I've got a fairly wide brush because it's quite a big area so we are now this these tin cans do have grooves I actually quite like the added texture that they they give but if you don't want one choose just a smooth one your PVA will bead up a little bit this is why I tend to put book pages to set off with because then it, it gives you a base for everything else to go on to. So you press your book pages on and then working from the middle to the outside smooth it on like that. Your first one is always the most difficult to get on. I tend to put my hand inside the tin can because it's easier to hold and you get less sticky. And we're just going to keep going around and put in the, book page, the music pages on. Try and get a piece that's fairly straight at the top. That sort of echoes the top of the tin can. I don't tend to worry about which way on the music paper is. It can be upside down, it can be wrong way around. It doesn't matter to me because it's just a background, it's your first layer. So some at the top, some at the bottom and again as I say you can overlap them. It doesn't matter, it's just your first layer. Now it's going to be quite boring for you to watch all this but hopefully you'll get started and while I'm putting this on you will be tearing your book pages and also making a start. So there and you might get the odd wrinkle. I'm not fixated about not getting wrinkles but if you think you don't want it there, smooth it out with your finger and press it down and go from your centre outwards so you get rid of any wrinkles or bubbles or anything. If you just move them out to the edge, it will mould to the tin can. If you don't like the feel of the glue on your fingers, put your gloves on. I would recommend at these Trouble times you just have one pair of gloves and just keep washing them because then you aren't wasting them. So we'll keep going around. It doesn't matter if your first lot of PVA dries on your tin can because it actually gives you a base for your next lot of PVA to stick to. That's our neighbours cutting the grass. Uh, I'll no doubt hear something that sounds like a demented wasp. There we are. So we're 
just keep going around and keep smoothing all the time to make sure it's stuck on. Not too many more. Yeah, it's nearly round. So that's a fairly straight edge. We'll go there. Up a little bit further. So you see I'm sort of starting. Now if this was tissue you wouldn't be able to pull it off and put it back on again but because this is book pages or music pages you can. You start in the middle and you work your way out. So that hopefully gets rid of any air bubbles, creases, whatever. from the middle out. Smoothing any wrinkles out. As I say, you don't do this with your fingers when you've got your napkins on. I nearly got to the end. There we are. Use all the mount on. It will go. That's the middle of the paper. And out again. Only one last bit will do it. Let's look. Oh, that's quite a nice bit. As you can see, I'm trying to get the edges so that they are fairly straight. And then I don't have quite so much sanding to do. And where it's a little bit like that and it goes in, I'll just tap and press it into the groove. You can overlap your papers so that they go onto the base. That's absolutely fine, just as long as you make sure that they are into this little groove or else you'll get a bubble and when you it's all dry it will sort of tear that your papers there but I'm going to sand this top and bottom when it's dry so I'm just going down now this is fairly smooth now because these but these uh, music papers are quite thick so it's smoothed out a lot of the creases that were on the a lot of the bands that were around the tin um, but if you papers thinner like this you'll still see the bands so choose your papers accordingly this one is the thin paper so you can still see the bands but I actually quite like that it depends what look you're going for now the next bit is really we need this to dry so I'm just going to switch the camera off, let it dry off, and then we'll do the next stage. Okay? Right, our tin can is dry. I give it a blast with my heat tool. Uh, the next thing is we need to just tidy up the edges because we've got a few little bits where the papers just on the edges where I don't want. If you've gone onto the base with your papers, it doesn't matter because it'll be nice and neat. I just get a sanding block or a nail file. Nail file would work as well and just sand off any little bits that I don't want. It's not too bad on the top. I just need a few little bits neatening up. The bits that were really long that were overlapping, I just cut off with a, a pair of scissors. So it's a bit neater now. But then now I'm going to give it a very thin coat of gesso. It just knocks back this 
music paper so it's in the background a bit more and it only needs to be a very very thin coat you can go onto the edges if you want it's entirely up to you so you can still see the music papers but they're not that needs sanding off I'll sand that off in a bit they're not are quite as obvious and it gives it quite a it gives a white background because once if your napkins have got a white background then they'll blend better if this is white so you can you see I'm only just giving it a little bit of a, a coat and if I've got any wrinkles I'm just working into the wrinkles Way too much gesso. That's it. I'll give it a blast just to dry it. <laughs> Just be careful when you're doing this that the metal will get hot so if you've got your hand inside it just be careful maybe hold it with a pair of uh, tongs or something because the metal will heat up and then it will heat up your hand inside i'm keeping it moving all the time so it isn't heating up too much Just need to sand off because I missed it. And then I can go back in with a bit of gesso just to cover the bit that I've now sanded off. That's it. Right, so we've got our jar tin even. Now the next bit we'll just make sure that's completely dry. I'm going to use these napkins because I absolutely love this. Now these are three ply so uh, what I've done is I've already taken one ply off. You just need to Separate the layers and then pull them apart. As I say, these were three ply. So I've already taken one off, so that's the second off. Don't throw these away because you can use them for other things. And I have a plan for another tutorial with those, so make sure you put them where you know where they are. I'm going to get some of these flowers out separately from the napkin. So you need a smallish brush with a fine point, you dip it into just plain water and then just a little bit away from the edge of whatever you want to get out from your napkin this is this little flower on the edge you just go around and draw a little line then your flower or whatever image it is will pull away from your napkin quite easily like that and set it aside you can then do the next little bit And it will again pull away. 
away. I want this big flower, so I'll go all the way around the big flower. Don't go right up to the edge of the flower, just leave a little bit of a gap where you can. There, there's two more flowers on the edge. And then it will again just pull away. Sometimes it helps to just support the other bit of the napkin. So you see I've got these all as separate little bits. So I can then put them on where I want. And I can overlap them if I want. I can build my own little, in this case, garden. I'll go around the green leaves because they might just fill a gap. And you continue to do this till you think you've got enough for your tin can or whatever you're covering. Jam jar, tin can, whatever you want. I don't bother about the straight edges because that actually gives me a straight edge to go onto my tin can when I want it to. So some I will leave the straight edges. That was a bit surplus to requirements, but I'll keep it because it's a filler. So can you see I've got quite a lot of little bits and then I can build them up on my tin can, which I'll show you in a moment. I know I've got gesso there. I'm being very careful not to put my elbows in it. Just moisten your brush again when you need to. Now this one I'm going to keep these blue flowers on the edge of this big flower because I quite like that. And my brush was getting a little bit dry there so it hasn't come away as easily. Yeah, it's dried out a bit there, so we'll go back again. You can always go back in again with a little bit more water and go around your flowers again. That's it. And it quite easily no effort at all and it comes away. This is dried out again, so I'll just go. You can see when it's wet because it goes translucent. See through really, basically. See, so that one's got some extras added as well to it, left on it. This one is another one. Just do a couple of pink ones and then we'll call it a draw and we'll start putting them on. We can always get some more later if we want. Yes, I quite like this pink flower. So we'll go around there. And we'll include the blue ones as well. They're quite pretty, the blue ones. Now if you get too, way too much water on, your paper almost dissolves and you lose some of it. So make sure you don't go way, way too much water or else it will completely dissolve your paper because it is very, very thin. I'll just do a little bit of this wisteria which I can, come, I can put on coming down from the top. enough. I'll leave it at that. We can always do some more so I'll leave my brush there. So we've got our tin can. I'll use decap 
harsh glue, but you could use the uh, PVA water. Right. So, let's take a harsh glue onto your gesso jar. Sure that you've got it everywhere that your tissue is going to go because once your tissue is on you can't get it off again. So I think we'll have let's see we'll start with something like this. This is why I sometimes leave the edges on. said I wasn't going to get my elbow in the gesso and I did. So that's something to avoid. I've got my tissue into the gesso. So we'll try again. So we've got our little bit of tissue on and work from the middle outwards because then it will and you'll get less bubbles. I think actually some of this gesso is still a tiny bit wet. So I just have to be careful. So you get the idea and you build your picture up. I'll work this way. Basically build your picture up. from your scraps. So this bit's wisteria, so it would normally be hanging down. So that's the middle, so we'll work gently from the outside, getting rid of any air bubbles while we can, if we can. Out from the outside to the edge. So you're gradually building it up. Now I don't mind if I get things overlapping slightly because it gives you like a layered look. It looks as if th some things are growing behind others. And again I'm going to sand this off when it's dry. Bit of a blank area there, I'll leave it for now, but I'll carry on going round and if I want to, when I come back, I can add another little flower in there. Now just be careful, edge of my tissue is there, I'm putting my medium on, if I do that it will lift the tissue, so just be very very careful. So I'm now going to go with one of my big flowers, which I think I'm going to have there. So we're working from the outside to the edge again. And up to the top. Make sure you've got a reasonable amount of medium on your brush. If it gets too dry, it will drag it and that's when you get tears. So we're going from the outside, the inside to the outside edge again and rushing as you go, being very careful when you've got bits that overlap. And I'm not going to worry about that edge because I can sand that off later. A bit more adhesive and we're going out, out from the center to the outside. Now this is what I, I put the music paper on because I actually like to see it in the little gaps. It just stops it being boring and plain. 
again I'm going just over to make sure that it's going to stick on this edge but don't brush into it or else it will come off. I think we'll have, that's quite a pretty one, what I'll do is I'll put it up there because it looks as if it's then growing from the, set, the, the bottom because the stems are coming out here. I've got some little butterfly. Now that bit is just going to obliterate that. So what I'll do is I'll try and gently lay it down and just tear that bit so I don't want that bit. That's it. But be very careful when you do that because it's very easy to tear bits that you don't want to tear. So can you see where it's overlapped? It actually looks as like if the flower's growing behind the other flower. I don't mind that. That's it. So this is a bit of a... I've got a straight edge from my first piece that I put on and I've got stems that are in the middle of nowhere. So I want something fairly strong. on there to cover that bit up. So if I put that, that marries in with this little bunch of flowers here. So that looks as if there's a bunch of flowers. And then if I've got a straight edge one here, so if I put that on there, Brush it out. In the centre. That makes it look as if it's supposed to be there. So that's a little bunch of flowers there. That I don't mind. I can always put another flower on the top. I don't mind areas like that because that's quite interesting because it's got the music papers. We'll go around and I think basically that's done. So we'll just give it a blast with the heat gun. Better just put that lid on there. Sorry about the noise. a little bit there. I've noticed that my tissue isn't quite stuck here. So I'll just go back. And make sure that's stuck on. So. Give that a bit of a blast. That's it, it's about dry. So then I just sand off those edges. really pretty. 
Now I do like vintagey themed projects, so I'm just going to ink some of these edges with vintage photo just to give it a bit more vintage feel. You don't have to do this. If you like it light and bright, you can leave it as it is. You just add in a tiny, tiny little bit. Not much or else it overdoes it. You're just sort of tickling it almost. And I tend to add it into bits where there's just white space. the edges. To me it makes it just look as if it's sort of worn and old and been sitting in a cupboard forever and a day. So I think that is about done. Now if you want, this is memento ink can add a bit more detail just in the odd area. I've got a stamp and it's just little round, it's an indigo blue one and just in the odd area you can add a bit of interest. You don't have to do this if you don't want and I'm only doing it in the odd one or two places just to add a bit of interest and stop it from being too just plain. So that is basically your altered tin can. Now, what does look quite pretty sometimes, quite nice, you can either run some washi tape around there or you can just tie some string round the top. So if you leave a length and go around a few times, sure you've got it under the lip. Tie a knot. it with it being garden theme garden twine looks quite nice little bow and you're done and that's it our little decoupaged tin can ready for storing whatever you want in it